Okay, perfect. Thank you, Hannah, and welcome to everyone also from our side. I'm going to start with the presentation and then my colleague, uh, Madame Udanu, is going to jump in to get into more details. I'm somehow going to plant the decor or going to um, yeah, reintroduce our project and what we did in the last month, but I'm going to be very brief because we already just had the presentation at Tropentag and many of you were there. So we're going to somehow start from there and just um, give you a very quick overview beforehand. So um, you know, Do is all about um, translating existing knowledge on climate change into knowledge pieces that are um, uh, usable by uh, local communities. And we're going to especially um, dive into that topic today. How can you actually translate super complex knowledge on climate change into something that is tangible and that is usable locally? That's our focus today. Um, so, uh, first of all, as I said, I'm going to give you a brief uh, project overview, um, an overview of the recent student, student course, and I'm particularly going to um, look into the documentation of the projects of the different students, and then provide some examples, and then we're going to have a um, discussion, I hope, and we plan for a lot of time of discussion in the end, of course, and I'm particularly happy that Many of our students joined the discussion today. Welcome to you all. And the students can also then go into more detail um, if you have specific questions. And yeah, they are the experts on their various projects. We're not going to have the time to present them all, but we're going to introduce three of their projects very briefly. So to start a very brief project overview, this is our puzzle, the puzzle we're currently working on. Um, we um, have some of the hypothesis that there's a lot of knowledge already existing on climate change, but it's not reaching the people that are actually the most touched by climate change. So we're trying to puzzle the different pieces together and build knowledge bridges or translate existing knowledge into something that is understandable locally. And we often have the feeling that research is so far away from what is actually happening in the, happening in the communities, like the communities at Kara University in the north of Togo. Um, and so uh, we're working with students from Kara University who are translating the knowledge to the community. So they're really um, directly working with the communities, going to visit them many times and um, define their projects together with them. And um, in their projects, they have very different approaches, but basically they are building on existing research but they also uh, feed in local and ancestral knowledge, um, existing good practices and field trials that they're doing themselves uh, within our project. So that is the puzzle, um, the pieces of the puzzle explained very briefly. And yeah, I think I didn't say that in the beginning, but our project is based in the north of Togo in the Kara region. So it's a quite remote area and the um, connection the bandwidth is not very high. So we're trying to work with digital technologies, but we really um, have to adapt them to the local circumstances, of course. Um, this is one of the platforms we're mostly working with, a local community network. And we explained that in detail at Tropentag. So very briefly, those networks are um, independent from the internet as we know it. They are like independent local networks that allow to share information within a limited perimeter. And the content that we put on that network um, is created by our students mostly. And that is what we're going to look at today, how the students create that content and how we um, are trying different uh, methodologies to yeah, provide a high quality content that is valuable for the local communities because only then they're going to use our network a little overview of the student course. Um, as I already said, we began with the challenge identification in the community. So the students visited the communities, had different exchanges and worked out specific challenges regarding climate change they wanted to work on during the next month. Then we had um, classes that were partly on-site sessions at Kara University and partly also online sessions. We experimented with different formats, but of course, um, 
the connection is not very stable, so we had to find many workarounds and we um, rather moved to asynchronous formats so that you can, um, for example, stream a video and then you have a discussion, but that is not live, but um, for example, via, via WhatsApp in the end or um, other platforms. Um, so yeah, very uh, many workarounds there and um, yeah, it's actually quite interesting to figure out what alternatives you have to live formats. And in that process, the students defined different research projects. First of all, they worked in a big um, yeah, research project as a team, which was very interesting to also try out different forms of collaboration. And then they worked on individual research projects um, that they are now completing. So they're handing them in at the end of this month. They are in the last steps of finalizing their um, results um, and their results are actually provided in an audio format that is going to be put on our local networks and we're going to talk about that in detail. Um, and all the work is documented in a note-taking app and that is what I want to show you very briefly. Um, so the students, um, as I said, visited the uh, different villages and had exchanges with the local communities and always reported on that in uh, Notion in a note-taking app and wrote little reports and we had exchanges on that and there was a lot of um, sparing, um, yeah, a lot of exchange going on um, on that platform and a lot of direct feedback and exchange on the different uh, tries the students did in the communities. Um, yeah, here yeah, that's just a few examples. Um, they documented what kind of works they did in the fields, what different tries they did. And now it's a bit abstract. We're going to show you details of the different projects because um, they are very, very different um, as you're going to see. And we clustered the, the work of the 15 students into research clusters. Uh, one is focused on innovation and experimentation, another one on the um, um, yeah, ecologic, um, um, taking care in an ecologic way of the, the earth and the fields. And the last one is the um, exchange network that I already talked about. Uh, the students worked in six different communities and they of course already had also had their per per personal profiles that were always updated and where um, the different work lines were linked up so that everyone would find the information very quickly. So that just as an overview to the um, yeah, documentation of the different projects. They also provided uh, videos, yeah, that's the last part, uh, videos of their projects in a very short format. So they all provided uh, five minutes videos where they explained the, the context, the topic they were working on and their concrete um, next steps in their, um, um, in their project work, their goals, etc. That was in the beginning. And now they are finalizing the end product, which are audios, but we're trying to try out different formats because we both have advantages. Videos are very heavy, consuming a lot of data and audios are very light, but sometimes it's, it also offers you a limited, um, limited means to really show um, what you want to do in terms of visualization, of course. Um, yeah, so that just as some examples. Do you have any questions on that? Just questions of understanding on what I just um, told you before we jump into the concrete details um, of some students' projects with my colleague, Madame Udanu. I don't, ah, Peter? Yes, thank yeah. you. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for, for the presentation. It, it looks always interesting and insightful to listen to Minodu. Uh, I want more clarification on the not taken up. Uh, how, how, how do the researchers use it? Is it like a notebook? You'll be taking your notes and when they come, they have to now compile it, translate into uh, a formal written data or what? I, I really want to, or once you take the note, it automatically records and you can have it. Thank you. Um, I don't, I did not understand your last sentence. If it automatically, um, we what your, 
it's an app so once you 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 record your notes you can automatically generate and extract the data without having to go and type it somewhere else again that is what i want to know how does it work um it's rather you can it's rather good just to cluster information and to link it up so you can link different pieces of knowledge as we call them um with each other so that you see the connections also in between the different projects of the students and that helps to yeah to 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 see where the connections are and where you have a strong evidence or lots of data on one topic for example but it's not um it's not replacing um, any data collection tool, for example. It's really rather documentation. And as I showed, um, this one really um, allows you to put pictures or links to videos mm -hmm. and have discussions, as you see here. Um, and that's what we thought was very handy. And you can also transform them into web pages very easily. So it's a very flexible format. Does that answer? All right. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it does. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So if there's no other hand, I will hand over to my colleague, Madame Udanu. Thank you, Karina. Uh, at this stage, we are going to share with you some examples of the students' projects. And the first case concerns the project developed by Giselle. Then Giselle is uh, evaluating two biological to biological pesticides on okra. And for, for it, she uses at inputs with lemon grass and eucalyptus extract at pesticides to fight against pests. And you can see on the image the, the atlas of this pest. She began the test on July 18, 2024, with four components. Uh, one component is considered as a control one and three treatment components. Between the three treatment components, there are two uh, that are biological ones and one chemical test. So she used on one component a chemical pesticide. Now she is uh, at, she's, uh, at the second harvest and the main observation is that the results is uh, more efficient with the chemical pesticides. However, the biological ones also help reduce the, the attacks of the flies as, okay. Mm. Then as I said, the result from the, the, the chemical treatment is better than the control one. And the results from the biological pesticide is also are also better than the the the, the control one. And we don't get the the photos from the biological test, but we we have the information on this. Then uh, we can see for some example, she is applying here. The, the pesticide she has developed. You can see also the harvest of the okra from the treatment group and from the chemical treatment group uh, below. Okay, you can move to the next slide, please. Yes, the second case concerns the project of Bontir and Ramo. Then they are, analy they are analyzing an exciting exchange platform for agricultural sector actors. Then they, they are proceeding by interviewing uh, any of the stakeholders composed by farmers, institutions, and researchers. And they do this to collect information for the analysis and better understand the functioning of the, the platform. And the remark is that females don't have access, uh, they have a limited access to internet and this makes difficult the use of the platform. And some of them also have difficulties in the use of smartphones and also don't, are not like, Ill are illiterate. Then some solution proposed consists in developing 
a software that does, doesn't need the internet and also raise awareness and sensitization to the farmers. Then these are some pictures of the, the work, the projects on the exchange platform. Please, the next. I'm hard enough to do. The third case concerns the project of Animan. Animan, yes. And this project consists in producing a liquid fertilizer. And after producing the fertilizer, he went to train the farmers on how to produce and use it. So the main inputs he used are manure, ash, water, and other, other, other inputs as greens and grasses. And all these inputs are mixed and the mix have to stay for some days before they filter it and use it on the farms. It also show the farmers how to use it, the dosage and how to apply it, to, to apply it on the plants. And then, now uh, the goal is to, all, to follow up the farmers and to see how they are using the, the knowledge they got from him and how they apply it on their, their farming activities. And there are some, yes, some show, some pictures that illustrate the training workshop. Next step, please. Then recently, Recently, students, I can see the names. Students have uh, had a workshop where they, they were trained to how they have to produce audios as they have to, to give a render as an audio and if possible as uh, a video. So the, the project team, uh, have uh, facilitated this for them by providing this workshop. So they, they learn how to write the scripts, how to produce the audio and so on. So they, they have all the tools to produce their audios at the end of their projects. So the audios produced will be translated in local languages and in this way, the farmers can access the knowledge easily. And also the audios will be shared on the network, on the network and on social media to make it available for any person that is in need of this information, of this information. Okay, I think I am, I finished with the, my part of presentation. Now we read the position of discussion, every observation, suggestion, and question to improve the project is welcome. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>